the diagram is made up of four congruent rectangles with dimensions three by four. What is the length of the path from A to B? Okay, well, we, with simple Pythagoras, you can figure out that it's a three, four, five uh, rectangle, this rectangle, right? If that was x, three squared plus four squared is x squared. And when you solve for this, you get x equal to five. Now, the rest of these dimensions, you can just get from the fact that it's four by three. Everything is four by three. And then you just count 4 plus 4 plus 3 plus 3, 4, and 3. So when you do that counting, you will get 22, and therefore 11 is 8. In the diagram, uh, PQR is a line segment, and angle PQS is 125. Angle QSR is X. SQ is SR. What is X? Okay, so this angle is going to be 180 minus 125, which is 55. Now, since this side and this side are the same, that's an isosceles triangle, and therefore that is also 55 degrees. And then we all know that all the angles of a triangle add up to 180. So x plus, uh, what's that, 110 is equal to 180, and therefore x is equal to 70. So number 12 is B. When attempting to arrange a pile of peaches into groups of threes, there are two peaches not in a group of three. Which of the following choices could be the number of peaches in the original pile? So basically what they're saying, you have a multiple of three, and then you have two peaches left over. So let's see, 19, I believe, is 18 plus 1. It's a multiple of 3 plus 1. Okay, so it's not that. 49 is equal to 48 plus 1, which is a multiple of 3 plus 1. 33 is in itself a multiple of 3, so it's not that. 29 is 27 plus 2, so this is the correct answer. And just to finish this off, 61 is a multiple of 3 plus 1. So the multiple of 3 plus 2 is what we're looking for, and that would be D for number 13. A list of five integers uh, repeats to form the pattern 4, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 0. 4, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 0. What is the sum of the first 23 digits? Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, so the first one is 4, negative 3, 2, negative 1, 0, right? So if I did this correctly, the sum there is 6 minus 4, which is 2. Now, all of these are the same, so that's going to be 2, 2, 2. But when we get to here, we just have 4, negative 3, and 2. And the sum of those numbers is 3. So then we just got to add up these guys, and that, I believe, is 11. So number 14, the answer is D. Bindu's bike tires have a radius of 30 centimeters. She rides her bike far enough that the tires rotate exactly five times. How far does Bindu's bike travel? Okay. So in a circle, if this is the radius, the circumference all the way around is equal to pi times two times the radius. So her uh, bike travels around five times. So it's the equivalent of five times the circumference. So that would be five times pi times two r, and r is 30 centimeters, correct? Yeah. So that looks like 5 times 2 is 10, 300 pi. And therefore, number 15 would be D. The numbers 41, 35, 19, 9, 26, 45, 13, and 28 are arranged in pairs so that the sum of the numbers in each pair is the same. The numbered pair with 13 is. So the first thing you do is you add up all these guys. And when you do, you get 216. Now, those 216, that sum, is divided into four pairs, right? There's eight numbers, and they're going to be put in pairs, so there's four pairs. And when you do that math, you get 54. So basically, it means each pair has a sum of 54. So then what they're saying is, what do you pair 13 with to get 54? Well, that would be 13 plus something is 54, and that something, I believe, uh, would be uh, 41, right? I think that's all there is to this question. Yeah. So that would mean 16 is E. For 30 consecutive days, the daily high temperature was recorded on each of the first 25 days. The temperature recorded was 21 Celsius. 
On each of the remaining five days, the temperature recorded was 15 Celsius. For the 30 days, the mean of the temperatures recorded was. So you do, th uh, let's see here, 25, right, times 21, and then 5 times the 15, and then divide by the total number of days. And then when you do this math, you will get 20. And that's pretty much all there is to number 17, giving you the answer C. The product of a pair of two-digit positive integers is 630. How many such pairs are there? Okay. So first of all, what is 630? It's 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 7. That's prime factorization. And they're saying we want two two-digit numbers. Okay, so um, I guess I got to do this manually, right? Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Uh, let's say 2 times 3 would be 6. That's not a two-digit number. But 2 times 9, which is 3 times 2, would be 18. And then the other party would be 5 times 7, which would be 35. So I guess that's what they're looking for. That's one pair. So how many of these pairs? Oh, boy. All right, let's see here. 2 times 5, that would be 10. 10 times the other one would be 63. Uh, 2 times 7, that's 14, and then that would be 45. Uh, what's the 3 times 5, that'd be 15, and then 42. And then, uh, do, 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 do. let's see here, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 5 is 30. Okay, yeah, that would be work. That would be 21. And I think that's it, because you're going to get, I don't think there's anything else. So 5 pairs, and therefore number 18 is D. At 9 a.m., Ryan had finished cutting half of his lawn. At 10 a.m., he had finished cutting seven-eighths of his lawn. If Ryan cut his lawn at a constant rate, what time did he finish? Okay, so he cuts half of his lawn, right? At 9 a.m., he had finished. Okay, so he had, at 9 a.m., he's cut half of his lawn, represented by that shaded area. So a half is remaining. And then by 10 a.m., that half's already done, so he's he's cut seven eighths. So he's cut all this. So the only thing remaining is an eighth, and that's by ten a.m. And what are they asking for? Uh, what time did he finish? Uh, okay, so what at what time do we get a complete? I guess. Okay, so I guess we can use the speed equals distance over time, even though that's probably not the way you would think. Uh, speed First, I calculate the speed. Hmm, let me think about this. First, I calculate the speed uh, from here to here. Yeah. So that would be the, the, well, the distance is sort of like representing the amount of grass or the amount of his lawn. So he cut this much, which was 3 eighths, right? So he cut 3 eighths in a span of one hour from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. So the speed is basically 3 over 8. Uh, whatever uh, units it is. And then now we're going to figure out how much the time does it take or, yeah, to cut the remaining one-eighth. So speed is equal to distance over time. The speed is constant. The distance now, or, yeah, is one-eighth, and the t is there. So if I isolate for t, it would be one over eight times eight over three, which is one over three. So he needs an additional one-third of an hour, which is 20 minutes. So this would be done by 1020. So hopefully that made sense. And therefore, number 19, the answer would be C. A 4x4 four four grid is to be covered with 16 square tiles. There are four tiles in each of the colors red, black, green, and yellow. Each row must contain one tile of each color. Each pair of tiles that touch along a side or at a corner must have different colors. In how many different ways can the tiles be arranged? So the first step is to make this into a 4x4 four four grid. And then off we go. So let's concentrate first on the first row. You're going to have four choices for that one, three choices for this guy, two choices for that, and one choice left over. So then you have to multiply them 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and you get 24. So 24 ways that you can make that first row. 
because you have four colors red black green and yellow okay now we're going to try to do the second row but this question is a little bit different because you have to sort of do it manually because you say okay oh let me just figure out how many choices do i have for the first well do i have three okay how many choices do i have for the second is it two but that the system doesn't work it falls apart because of this condition here this condition that al the tiles along the side and corner must have different colors and i'll explain what they mean by that okay first what i'm going to do is walk you through an example because right? i think it's easier un un unless otherwise it becomes too abstract okay so let's start with an example and what example do you want to use here um let's tr let's start with g like this top row was g y and r and b right you can use any letters i'm just starting with that okay so now now we're going to try to figure out the next row so this row right here the first one cannot be a g because that rule states that the tiles that touch sides cannot have to have different colors so it can't be a g but it also cannot be a y why is that did you guys understand the question because it shares a corner and some people might have even missed that see it shares this corner so therefore this uh first tile in that second row cannot be a g or a y okay so what can it be? Well, let's try, can it be a B? Let's see what happens. If it's a B, let's move to, ne to the next one. This one right here, that cannot be a G a, because it shares a corner. It can't be a Y because it shares a side and it can't be an R. So the only thing I can put is B, but I already put the B there. So that all fell apart. So therefore, that can't be a B. The only thing it could be, if I do this again, G, Y, R, B, the only choice we have, actually, interestingly, for this first guy, is the R. That's it. So there's only one choice so far. Now let's keep going. Now this next one cannot be a G, Y, or R. has to be a B. The next one cannot be a Y, an R, or a B. has to be a G. And there's only one letter left, and it goes there. So if you notice, for every single one, there's only one choice. So, so far, this row has only one option for each of those 24. I just selected one such of uh, possibility of those 24. So, so far, this is only one, this uh, row for each of the 24. There's going to be only one, interestingly, uh, way of doing the second row. Okay, now let's move on to the third row. And let's see what we get. Okay. So this first uh, a tile cannot be an R or a B. It could be either a G or a Y, right? So uh, let's try uh, a Y. If I put a Y there, the next one cannot be an R, B, or a G. can only be a Y, but the Y is already chosen. So that was a dud. So I guess I start all over again. That's okay. I don't mind. So G, Y, R, B, R, B, G, Y. So I guess the only way I can put a letter there is to choose, uh, can't be an R, a B, or a G. Uh, it, can't, it has to be a G. Yeah, it can't be an R or a B, and I just realized that it can't be a Y, so it has to be a G. Okay, so let's keep on moving here. The next one cannot be an R, B, or G, has to be a Y. The next one cannot be a B, G, or Y. has to be an R. And finally, that's going to be a B. So again, if you notice, there's only one way of creating that row. And then finally, the final row, the first tile cannot be a G or a Y. It has to be a, either an R or a B. Now, I'll save some time and say that it, it, it can't be the B. Because if you put a, put a B there, right, if you put the B there, then the next one cannot be a G, Y, or R has to be a B, but he already put the B there, so it's not the B. So the next one is actually an R. Next one over can't be a G, Y, or R has to be a B. Next one over has to be a G, and then the final one is a yellow, R, B, G, Y. And you see, in that row, every tile had only one option. There you go, one option.
So in the end, you multiply all these guys. 24 times 1 times 1 times 1. And that, interestingly, is just 24. So quite time-consuming for a number 20, but nevertheless, the answer is B.